Hello, hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my craft space and the cards for this video. So I did coffee themed. I promised forever ago, years ago, years, it's been years. I was gonna do like a coffee series cause I love coffee themed cards, stamps, dies. I don't know, just, I really enjoy. I think it's cause it's another one of those what I call a neutral. Not everyone loves coffee, but I like a lot of them now have like tea sayings, that sort of thing. But I love coffee theme. Anyway, never did do the series. I just, when I get the chance, I do them. Anywho, I did not only coffee themed, I stamped with a coffee mug. <laughs> not sure if I'm putting that in the title yet or not, but I've done this before um, in previous videos and it's fun and super easy and uses a literal coffee mug. Um, I did a bit of mixed media. Uh, Picket Fence Studios, their most recent release, so their June release, had some coffee themed products in it. My stamp's already stained. I used archival ink. I'll get into that later. Um, and I just, I was like, oh, yes. Especially because the one, this uh, Ruby Girl, love love. I think that was one of my very first purchases from the Picket Fence brand way back in the day. Um, years ago, I had spotted all of these images and love them. All these different women images and they just, the style of them, I just, oh. so I remember ordering all of them. I've done videos in the past using them and then I have been not so subtly asking for more. <laughs> And then a couple weeks ago, I did do this one. I, there isn't a public video for this card. This was another image they released um, with the June release. The video for this card is actually exclusive to my Patreon members. Um, I don't really promote my Patreon very much because I just suck at that. But the link to it is always in the description box below all my videos. And yeah, I do an exclusive video, like a card making video every month for my um, crafty besties tier and above. So that was that video for this month. And yeah, keep watching and I will show you the mucky mixed media-ish cards I made and the stamping I did with a coffee cup on these cards. Oh, if only you guys could see what goes on behind the scenes. Nearly lost all the footage for this card. <laughs> When I say I have tech issues, oh boy. Anyway, salvaged everything, was able to, you know, get it all edited to share with you guys. So first step, this is the Our Finest Selection clear stamp from Picket Fence Studios. And because this stamp is brand new, I've shown this in many videos, I rub my fingers all over it. It helps uh, with quality photopolymer stamps. There's generally a coating on them when they are brand new and that's where you'll see like ankle beat up that sort of a thing so there's many ways to combat that I just rub my fingers on it and then the other thing is use it like stamp it multiple times you stamp it clean it stamp it clean it uh, a well-loved stamp you know the more it gets inked up and stained and all the things it stamps so much better so I did all that and then I'm not actually aiming for perfection one because it is overrated and two this is going to be part of my mixed media background so I just left the stamp like just face up on my work surface and I inked it up with antique linen distress oxide ink and I stamped it onto um, some ranger white heavy stock uh, cardstock I because I wasn't 100% certain yet what I was going to do in the end you could use just regular white cardstock for everything I do for this background because I don't end up actually doing a lot of like water heavy techniques anything like that but when I was starting this whole process I was like you know who know who knows where it's gonna go <laughs> so inked it up pressed the cardstock into it used a scrap piece of paper just to somewhat prevent me from getting ink everywhere but I'm, I'm literally gonna get it everywhere right now so ground espresso distress oxide spray I also learned from this little mistake and I'll show that later in the video I sprayed it directly on my work surface and you can see it went everywhere it went everywhere. I'm fine with it, but it just, it made a mess. And then I used my coffee cup to stamp. Like I said, how easy is that? 
And it will look different on different surfaces. And later, when I do the, the panels for the inside, I'm using different cardstock. And it's just interesting how it immediately soaks in. On heavy stock, things kind of sit on top of it a little bit longer, which is great. I'm actually going to use the heavy stock for watercoloring. But all I did was I just shook up my oxide spray really, really well, sprayed it onto my work surface, and then used the bottom of the coffee cup to, like, I inked up the bottom of the coffee cup and stamped with it. And that way you get literal coffee rings. So depending on the size of your mug, you can use the bottom of any like circular container, you know, like the the distress spray bottle itself, etc. Kind of just experiment. Um, it's kind of fun with the coffee mug because again, it's got like the little like grooves in it. So it's not a perfect circle, which is what I'm going for. Um, yeah, it's just fun. And then of course, I splattered on the back, like you, I, got, I got ink everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I had fun. So I set those aside for the main image here. Um, this fabulous little uh, Ruby Girl stamp. I'm using more heavy stock. And I inked this one up with um, Ground Espresso Archival Ink. Now, archival inks, those are in a class of their own. They are um, permanent inks. You can stamp them on multiple surfaces. You can stamp them on top of a lot of things. They will stain your stamps. It just, no matter what you do, archival inks will stain your stamps. That is okay. A stained stamp is a loved stamp. And, and again, the more stain they get, the better they stamp. I know it's, it, it's frustrating to go from pretty, pristine, clear photopolymer. But honestly, y'all, it just... Unless you want to keep them in the pack, and even then, I could say I was gonna say you could keep them in the packaging and just never use them, you know. And I do that too with some brands. I collect a lot of things, but um, even then, because photopolymer will yellow over time. So really, just use them. Just use them. Enjoy the staining. Stamp them. They're great. So I stamp this with the Ground Espresso um, archival ink. And because it's permanent, it will not react with water or, or, and whatnot. Um, the only thing I wouldn't use archival inks with is uh, alcohol marker coloring because the um, ingredients in archival ink, I think, will somewhat react with um, the alcohol markers. So that's the only time I would not use archival inks. But for like watercoloring or if you want to do ink blending over it, etc., works great. So my watercoloring, I kept quite simple. And I know for some, when I say simple, they're like, uh, yeah, are you serious? Don't forget, I not only do I do this as a job, and I've been doing this as a job for many years, I have been, you know, card making for a, over a couple decades. And watercoloring I've been doing for uh, well over 10 years now. I forget when I started watercoloring, you know, and just slowly diving into it. It, it, it took a while, you know, it just it does. It takes practice. It takes experimenting and fiddling and all the things. When I first started, I was always so frustrated because I was like, why is it not looking the way I want it to? But I get a decade of practice. It didn't take me the full decade to get, you know, comfortable with it. I forget how long it actually took, you know, before I really started being comfortable to the point where it's one of something I do a lot. Like I love to watercolor, but yeah. This is simple watercoloring. <laughs> and, it, and it is. An image like this is looks a little more intimidating because, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a real person and it's there's detail. But the great thing is, is there's detail. So you just kind of follow it. So I did the skin tones and I'm using all just little distress inks. I just smushed them on my glass work service here and my little uh, Tim Holtz, my little baby water brush that I love. And I started with the skin because when I do use people images I always do the skin first it's just a habit for me it's like how I talk about when I do rainbows I always do yellow first that is my other little random rule when I do peoples I do the skin first and I kept it simple I used tattered rose and a little bit of tea dye and worn lipstick for her hair I used a uh, rusty hinge and as it would dry I would go back in and add another little layer of color you know here and there just to get that little bit of depth and dimension and then I used Ground Espresso Distress Ink for um, her pants. And then for her jacket, I pulled out Peacock Feathers. I thought that would just like pop really nicely against all the browns I have going on that will be, you know, the background, etc. And also because it's a beautiful color. And now I'm like, oh, I want her jacket. <laughs> it's beautiful. I love it. I want one. <laughs> but I did the same thing. I just 
add a quick simple layer of color and then I go in where the detail is. I follow the stamped lines in a sense. So where there's more little sketchy lines that are giving, you know, an idea of that's where some shading would be, I add a bit darker color. And I just would kept flipping this around and doing like repeating the process. And then I just kept using the ground espresso sometimes with a little bit more water. So, you know, fading it out a little bit for the little coffee cup and her little scarf. And yeah, this just came together. And then after I had done that, I was like, I need to add some peacock feather color to those backgrounds. So for that, I pulled out peacock feathers uh, paint, distress paint. And the biggest thing to note with distress paint, any acrylic paint you want to immediately wash your brushes, your tools, etc. after you're done. You do not want to let this paint dry in any of your tools, etc. It will ruin them because it's paint. It is like acrylic paint. So I put a bit on my work surface and I just use my little, one of my little distress collage brushes and dry brush this onto these backgrounds. Now they weren't completely dry. And on top of it, they are what, like I used water reactive products, the Distress Oxide ink and the Distress Oxide spray. So they are kind of reacting with that paint and they're smearing. I'm okay with that. It's fine. It's mixed media. I got splatter going on and I'm going to add more splatter. And then when everything comes together, I, it, it's it's fine. Um, you could technically a heat set before adding the paint. Even then though, most likely that stuff would still smear. Um, you might, like I said, get a better... Um, less smearing in a sense if you use a different cardstock because like I said earlier with heavy stock things kind of sit on the surface a little bit more with it for longer and yeah heavy stock was not necessary for this background because I'm just I'm not adding a ton of like liquids and all the things but it's still a really nice cardstock and that's what I used for the watercoloring and it was fine too so for these panels um, and yeah, I added splatter, of course, to the backgrounds. So I set those aside. And then these panels, this is just basic white cardstock um, that I trimmed down to a couple A2 sizes. And I pulled out the stencil set. I've had this for a while. It's the Picket Fence, uh, the best bean in town. <laughs> and I used uh, Simon Says Stamps uh, Latte Ink. Every, you know, I love how everything was like coffee themed. Even the names of some of the things I was using. I was like, this is all meant to be. So I use latte ink, so just very light brown, and my uh, picket fence paper pouncer to add the um, main bean to these little backgrounds. And then for the detail part of the stencil, of the second stencil, I used uh, cappuccino ink. So still keeping it fairly light because this is going to go on the inside of these cards, and I don't want it to be too dark. Like I will write right over this with a pen, and it'll still be legible, you know. So I didn't want to use like super dark shades of brown so I added um that to both of them and then I was like I want to do more more stamping with my coffee mug because it's it really is fun <laughs> and I was like and just so you'll because you'll be able to see it even more on the inside so this time I used my brain and rather than spray the spray I shook it up really well and then opened it and used the little you know nozzle tube to just put it onto my work surface so much better and this you can kind of see the difference it immediately soaked in because this is just paper this is not meant for you know major liquids anything else and it just worked so i added those little coffee rings and that's it no splatter no nothing because i'm going to stamp a sentiment and then keep because that will go on the inside and i don't want it too busy so that i can still write you know inside it and then I grabbed a couple pieces of brown cardstock from my stash. And on the dark brown cardstock, I stamped one of the sentiments from the Espresso Yourself stamp set. And I used my anti static powder tool, stamped the sentiments with clear embossing ink, covered them with detail white embossing powder, melted that with my heat tool. And then off camera, I'll end up die cutting those with one of Simon Says Stamps uh, sentiment label wafer dies. And then this little piece, I stamped another little sentiment from the set with that uh, ground espresso archi archival ink. I had to. This little stamp, it says make good choices and it just made me laugh. And it just reminded me of when I would drop my older kids off at high school. The amount of times I did that, like roll down the window, make good choices. Embarrassing them in front of all their classmates because that's what you do as a mom. So anyway, <laughs> I just had to include that. <laughs> so stamp that. And then again, off camera, I just die cut it with a little circle wafer die. And then I stamped another sentiment from that same set 
onto this panel that will go on the inside of the card with um, the ground espresso archival ink again. So now I've got like everything's like ready to go. So it's time to start assembling. So all of my panels, I trimmed down a bit. I think I trimmed all these down to like four inches by five and a quarter so that my card base will um, frame it up a little bit. So trimmed down all of the panels and then decided to add kind of a slanted edge to the heat embossed sentiments just to give them that little extra something. So did it once with my trimmer and then lined up the second one just to get them on the same angle. Not like it really matters, but just made things easier. So did all of that. And then those I'm going to adhere directly to my uh, mucky backgrounds with Craft Hacky Glue. Once I've got those adhered, I'll trim off the excess just with my scissors. And then I pulled out some Baker's Twine because... I'm back on that kick again and like adding baker's twine to almost all my cards. So this is just some Hemteek, uh, Hemteek Baker's twine. I've been using the black one a lot. That's like always my go-to, but they had a couple different shades of brown in there and I was like, oh, perfect, meant to be. So <laughs> figured out where I want the bow to be and then yeah, wrapped it around my card a couple times or my card front and then I use my reverse tweezers. You start the bow just like so, pull it tight, use the reverse tweezers to hold it in place because they will hold it without, you know, and pinch it closed. It's like having a little extra hand that doesn't really get in the way, which is perfect. And then I can fiddle and make my bow the way I want it. And then I repeat the process on the second card front. And then to adhere my um, little character here, I'm just using some waffle flower foam strips because I love these things and this image is very long and narrow so it's like oh the foam strips are actually better than fiddling and trimming down you know little foam squares and that sort of a thing so this way it'll give it a bit of dimension and also make it adhere nicely over top of the baker's twine so got that pl in place peeled off the backing and then pop these onto the cards and then that little uh, make good choices circle I also just pop that into place with a little foam square and then the inner panel, I adhered to the inside of my card base with Craft Tacky Glue. And my card bases are A2 top folding cards, so four and a quarter by five and a half. And that's uh, Simon Says Stamps Peacock cardstock, another one of my favorites. This color is just divine, divine. So use that for my card bases. To adhere the card fronts to the card bases, I put uh, Simon's Big Mama foam tape on the back of it gives it a bit of dimension because dimension is life as we all know and it also makes things adhere nicely because again baker's twine gets in the way and then it's my final bit of embellishment i pulled out the picket fence i have the neutral hearts pack that i've shown in a few videos there's black white and brown ones and some like um, sequins and stuff in this pack it's really cute but i just used a few of the little brown hearts and then i pulled out um this all about the teals uh, sequin mix from Picket Fence. And I, can't, I love when this, I just, I love when this happens. It was the perfect shade, you know, it just went. I just, it's very satisfying when that happens. <laughs> Is it surprising when I have literally 15 life, I think I'm now up to what, 15 lifetimes worth of bling? I think the last time I was saying like three to five, I think I'm now at like 15 lifetimes worth of bling. So anyway, not really that surprising that I find colors that match, but it's still satisfying and it still makes me happy. So put those onto the cards with dabs of Craft Tacky Glue. Once everything was adhered, these cards were complete. I hope you guys enjoyed. And as always, I will have a link below the video. I will have a link to my blog post that will have the pictures of the cards and the supply, like picture links to all the supplies I used. The supply list will also be in the description box directly below the video. And then, like I mentioned earlier, I have links to my Patreon and my social media and all that. That is also directly below. So you can just expand that and check it out if you are interested. And thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping and commenting and letting those robot overlords know you like what you see. And I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.